That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. If you've been watching anime in recent years, you've definitely heard of a certain animation studio called Studio Mappa. They're the studio responsible for adapting some of the bigger anime titles to have come out, like Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, Vinland Saga, and my personal favorite, Sex. The prologue. It's the prologue to Sex 2. <laughs> it's the prologue to Sex 2. Uh, my sense of humor is f Nowadays, if you ask any modern anime fan, they're probably familiar with MAPPA's more recent titles. That's not necessarily a bad thing, these are the most popular animes for a reason. But the downside is that MAPPA's more earlier works got kinda overshadowed. A lot of people tend to forget that this is a studio that came out swinging when they first debuted. Between the breathtaking motorcycle scene in Terror and Resonance to some of the best choreography in Yuri on Ice, Studio Mappa was determined to grab the anime community by the balls and go, Look at me. I'm the captain now. And while there are a few shows from Mappa's back catalog that I would like to talk about, the show I really want to highlight is the one that I feel gets passed over the most. And it's one of their older titles that you probably haven't heard of before. And that anime is called Raja Bahamut Genesis. Now, aside from sounding like a really bad mobile game, which is not really too far off the truth, this anime has another red flag in that it's an anime adaptation of said bad mobile game. And if you've been watching anime long enough, you'll know that anime adaptation of games are... They're, uh... They're... They're bad, okay? They're just bad. They don't really have a good track record, let's be honest. Look, bring me on. I'm willing to expand on this take some more. But what separates Rage of Bahamut from your usual adaptation is that not a lot was adapted from the game in the first place. Aside from the name of certain characters and the name of the show itself, that's about it when it comes to what was ported over from the game to the anime. The story is 100% a MAPPA original creation, so you don't really need to have played the game to know what exactly is going on. Not that you can do so anyway, since as of 2022, this game has officially went under, so yeah, good luck with that. Without spoiling too much, the story of Rage of Bahamut follows Favreau Leone as he escorts a mysterious girl named Amara to find her mother in a place called Helheim. This journey would put them in a race to stop the resurrection of the world-ending dragon, Bahamut. The best way I can describe this story is that it's exactly what it says on the tin, really. It wears its action-adventure gimmick on its sleeve and doesn't really do anything new with the formula. The main characters need to get from point A to point B, and action happens in between. But the reason why I like this anime is that even though it has a very simple plot, it actually has surprisingly well-written characters. The main character, Favro, is actually a really good example of this. Aside from looking like a literal walking cheese ball, his journey from uncaring swindler to scrappy hero is a surprisingly compelling one. At the beginning of the series, he starts off as this perverted drunk, absolutely willing to scam a naive girl just to score a few more bucks, to eventually becoming an unsuspecting hero willing to risk his own life just to make things right again. Over the course of the anime, you don't just get to see him learn to regret his actions, but strive to take accountability for the damage that he's caused. And that's what makes this show honestly pretty good. It's character writing. Favaro isn't main character material because he's naturally more powerful or morally better than other main characters. He's main character material because he's recognized that he's done some pretty scummy things and just wants to be better. I know this is a very random example, but Favaro's story arc can be summed up by this scene from Pirates of the Caribbean. Whoa. You've seen it all, done it all. You survived. That's the trick, isn't it? To survive. It's not just about living forever, Jackie. The trick is living with yourself forever.
I know from the way I've been talking about this anime, it makes it seem like a 10 out of 10 show, so I'm gonna say something that will immediately contradict this entire video. This is such a 7 out of 10 anime. I adore this show dearly, I really do, but I'm not gonna pretend this show is perfect. It has some pretty glaring flaws. The anime doesn't really develop its setting that much, so you don't really know why or how so many gods and demons exist in the first place. Some characters are given the most cookie cutter backstory, so you don't really have a reason to care for them that much. The anime is very much carried by the interactions that the main characters have with each other as they go on this journey, which is half the reason why I like the show. The other reason why I like it, and why I do recommend you give this show a shot, is that at the end of it all, it's simple. Don't get me wrong, I love shows that are thematically complex. I love shows that make me think and that challenge my beliefs. I literally made a video about an anime that does this. But Rage of Bahamut wins me over by the fact that it doesn't do any of this. It acknowledges that it won't reinvent the action-adventure genre in 12 episodes and just tries to be the best version of itself. The showrunners effectively went, here's an escort mission with dragons that has characters with just enough depth to make you go, yeah, Favreau and Kaiser were kinda cool. This anime won't be winning any awards anytime soon, but it doesn't need to. Are there other animes that do what Rage of Bahamut does with more complex characters and themes? Oh yeah, definitely, I'm not contesting that. I've been watching anime since I was a teenager, so that was around the early 2010s, and I noticed that anime has this weird tendency of trying to outdo itself. That the more edgier or morally complex a character or story is, the better. But seeing Studio Mappa go back to storytelling basics was honestly very refreshing. Yeah, you have franchises like Fate and Full Metal Alchemist that have some very deep symbolism behind their stories, but you don't always need that. The story of Rage of Bahamut is just about a man recognizing that he's done bad and simply wants to be better. And it's a good example that some of the best stories are just about good people trying to do the right thing. And that's a lesson I wish some animes would take to heart sometimes.